Hey, hello everyone. And today's topic is about age estimation. In previous two three videos, we have discussed about dentition and sex determination. So today we will discuss about age estimation. So age estimation can be determined from teeth or ossification of bones can be determined from secondary sexual characteristics or general development as in case of children. Now we are uh, first of all we are having teeth. So at birth the rudiments of all temporary and the first permanent molar may be found in the jaw. At the time of birth the rudiments of all the temporary and first permanent molar is present in the jaw and the temporary teeth begin to fall at about 6 to 7th year after the eruption of first permanent molar and the age of for, uh, eruption of first permanent molar is uh, 6 to 7 years and uh, temporary teeth last up to 12 years so the age of mixed dentition is between 6 to 12 year of age but this is the age which is the age of mixed dentition in which both permanent as well as temporary teeth are present in the jaw now the Gustafson's method this was the method which was devised by Gustafson for age estimation in case of uh, post-mortem so it's a basically a post-mortem procedure and the age estimation based on physiological age changes in the each of the dental tissues and this is useful in adult over 21 years now uh, after doing various uh, research uh, in various articles the entry teeth are found more suitable for study uh, by using Gustafson's method as compared to posterior teeth. Gustafson has taken different criteria. So there are total six criteria in which the root translucency is the most reliable criteria of Gustafson's method. Other criteria are the secondary dentin deposition, cementum opposition, or root resorption, atresion, or paradentosis. So the most reliable criteria is root translucency and least reliable criteria is root resorption. So Gustafson uh, method of uh, age estimation based on the certain characteristic or certain physiological changes which occur uh, due to aging process. So Gustafson devised a scoring system from 0 to 3. Similarly for eye region, secondary and paradentosis and so on from 0 to A3 and finally we will get one score and by adding that score in one equation we will get the age of that person. So this is the method which is useful only in case of postmortem age estimation. Now bone. So skull is having different fontanelles like entry fontanelle closes at around second years. We will discuss the all the other fontanelles in coming two three slides so the base C occiput is the first joint which fuses with the base C spinoid at around 18 to 21 years so for diagrammatic depiction this is the occipital bone and this is foramen magnum and these are occipital condyles so this is base C occiput and this is base C spinoid so base C occiput fuses with the base C spinoid so this is the first joint in skull which fuses earliest at the age of 18 to 21 years now the inner table of skull fuses uh, about 5 to 10 years earlier as compared to outer table of skull. So if all the skull sutures are closed then the, uh, the age indicates that the age of the person is more than 60 years or between 60 to 70 years. Now uh, the newborn skull is having different fontanelles or opening and uh, one entry fontanelle which closes at the age of 18 to 20 years or one post fontanelle that closes at the age of 2 to 4 months 18 to 20 months not years sorry then the two anterior lateral fontanelles or the sphenoidal fontanelles which closes at the age of 6 months and two posterior lateral fontanelles which closes at the age of 6 to 12 months now we are having uh, one suture which may persist between two frontal bone this suture is called as metopic suture that closes at the age of two to four years and if the suture will persist so this condition is called as metopism or persistence of metopic suture now this coronal suture we will divide coronal suture into two parts the lower half fuses at the age of 40 to 50 years and upper half at the age of 50 to 60 years then we will divide sagittal suture into three parts the posterior one-third fuses at the age of 
30 to 40 years. The anterior most anterior one third fuses at the age of 40 to 50 years and middle third at the age of 50 to 60 years. The first part that is the posterior one third, then the anterior one third, then the middle one third of sagittal suture. Then the lambdoid suture will divide lambdoid suture into two parts. The upper one third fuses at the age of 50 to 60 years and up, uh, lower half fuses at the age of 60 to 70 years so this is the age of different uh, of fusion of different sutures of skull so based on these findings we can determine the age of any person if all the sutures are from fused then the age of the person is more than 60 or between 60 to 70 years so now something about radiological examination the radiological examination can be done by using various bones so first of all we will talk about clavicle the clavicle or the collar bone it's having two primary centers which appears at the age of four to five weeks in intrauterine life and it's not having any secondary center for lateral end or the acromion end it's having one center for external end that appears at the age of 15 to 18 years of age and fuses at the age of 20 to 21 years of age so clavicle is having two primary center and one secondary center for the external end it is not having any center for lateral or acromion end now the sternum sternum is having different primary centers as well as secondary centers so primary center for manubrium and the first stern breed appears at the age of five to six months then center for second and third stern breed appear at the age of seven months then center for fourth stern breed at the age of 10 months for the g -fed process the center appears at the age of three years so for manubrium strain, the age of appearance is six months and for second stenbury is uh, uh, six months or five to six months then for second third and fourth stenbury the age is seven months seven months ten months respectively and finally for gpod process the age is three years so and the secondary centers uh, the uh, appears in the sternum uh, as two waves Two waves one is a primary wave and then is uh, the secondary wave first wave for the fusion of body of sternum or the mesosternum that is from below to apart between last primary and second last is 15 years 20 years and 25 years and so on the body will form completely ossified at the age of 25 years the 15 20 and 25 years then the second wave of fusion that is for g -fed process the g -fed process fuses with mesosternum at the age of 40 years and manubrium strain fuses with the body of sternum at the age of 60 years. So at the 60 years of age, the sternum is found completely ossified. So this is all about uh, age estimation by using sternum. Then the different joints we will discuss in upcoming uh, uh, video that will uh, be by depiction of x-rays in view box. So we will discuss it later on. Now. The point to remember is the first ossificus center to appear is for clavicle and lower jaw at the age of four to five weeks in intrauterine life. Now the age of fetus is the based on the rule of Hesse's that is up to five months age can be determined age of the fetus can be determined by the square root of length in centimeters. That is the rule given by Hesse's. Then after five months the rule was given by Morrison's. The age of the fetus can be determined by dividing length of length in centimeter of the fetus divided by five. So this is called as Morrison's law or Morrison's modification of Hesse's rule. Then, medical legal importance of age that is to determine or to decide the criminal responsibility according to section 82 of Indian Penal Code. Any act, any act done by a child under seven years of age is not an offense. So this is written in section 82 of Indian Penal Code. Now the section 87 of Indian Penal Code says that a person more than 18 years of age can give valid consent to suffer any harm which may result from an act not intended or not known to cause death or give assault. So the point to be noted is that the act is uh, should not be intended or should not known to cause death. So knowledge and intention should not be there. That is section 87. Indian Penal Code. Then the section 89 of Indian Penal Code says that the child less than 12 years or any person of unsoundness of mind cannot give valid consent to suffer any harm which may occur from an act done in good faith or for its benefit. So if any harm 
whether the harm is done in uh, even in good faith or for the benefit of the child or that person of unsoundness mind so uh, they cannot give valid consent so we need the consent of parents or legal guardians in this case now according to juvenile justice act the judicial punishment for juvenile uh, uh, cannot be given by uh, sentence to death or life imprisonment or committed to imprison so according to the uh, juvenile justice act the juvenile mean a person who has not completed 18 year of age that person is called as juvenile and no juvenile can fit pre law shall be sentenced to death or life imprisonment or committed to imprison so there are different law for juvenile the, these laws are prescribed in juvenile justice act now the other methods used in identification first is dactylography or fingerprinting or the golden handy system so this is the most reliable method of identification that is used for identification so fingerprinting are impression of patterns formed by the papillary or the epidermal ridges of the fingertips so different uh, ridges and papillary patterns are there on the fingertips these are the pattern which are uh, the impression of these ridges then the different classif different uh, classifications of fingerprints like loops are most common around 67% are loops then holes are around uh, 25 to 35% holes and the arches are around 5 to 10% are arches then the composite form is around 1 to 2% so loops holes arches and composite form so these are different kind of uh, fingerprint patterns so these are loops there may be ulnar loops which are diverted towards ulnar side there may be radial loops which are diverted towards radial side then may be holes and then arches arches may be plain arch may be tented arch so these are different kinds of fingerprinting patterns now the 10 to 12 points of fine comparison are accepted at point of identity in case of fingerprints these are based on the quetelet's law that says that in human science there is biological variations so each and every person even the identical twins are having different fingerprint pattern that is the rule of biological variation so these fingerprints are not inherited so paternity cannot be proved by using fingerprint as compared to dna fingerprinting that can be used for paternity testing so fingerprints are not inherited fingerprints appear at around 16 weeks during intrauterine life and completely form around 24 weeks so the pattern are affected by the uh, uh, different uh, physiological changes during intra uterine life so these are not inherited now something about retinal scan these are the unique patterns which is not changed from birth until death so these patterns even different in identical twins may be altered in some pathological condition like cataract glaucoma retinal detachment or diabetes so these uh, retinal scans are unique for a person and that can be stored and later on can be matched for verification similarly iris scan can be there and individuals irids are unique and structurally distinct which allow for them to be used for recognition purpose in iris scan so i uh, the feature extractor will record different findings based on the iris the uh, different characteristic of each iris that can be recorded and later on can be matched log some something about superimposition we will discuss superimposition and uh, in coming videos in detail a little bit about superimposition the technique applied to determine whether the skull is that of person in the photograph or not so basically we will match the skull with the given photograph so uh, the photograph is enlarged to a natural size from the presence of some standard things in the photograph like based on the interpupillary distance corresponding or not some some uh, article some belonging uh, was there so we will enlarge the photograph up to the size of that belonging or up to the level of interpupillary distance up to the, uh, the they will correspond to each other now tattoo marks the tattoo marks are most permanent picture are made when the dye penetrates the dermis so these uh, the permanency of the tattoo marks depends on the depth of the dye the deeper the dye will penetrate tattoo to marks will last longer the rate of fading depends not only on the composition of pigment but also on the de depth to which it penetrated the skin and the site which is tattooed so if the tattoo marks is present on the exposed site 
they will fade away early and they are if present on non exposed site they will last longer now the marks are recognized even in decomposed bodies when the epidermis is removed by wiping the area or can be recognized by using ultraviolet lights then here this study of hair is known as trichology and hair grows at the rate of 0.4 mm per day and nail grows at the rate of 0.1 mm per day so the appearance of hair is first first to appear is the pubic hairs then the axillary then mustache then beard so this is the sequence of appearance of hair then hair become loose after 72 hours of death they will become loose now the difference between human and animal hair the uh, human hair are fine and thin as compared to animal hair these are coarse and thick now the cuticle uh, cuticular scales are short and broad in case of human beings but these are very large and wavy projections are there in case of animal and cortex is thick cortex in case of human hair and thin cortex in case of animal hair then the me me uh, medulla in case of human hair are narrow and fragmented but it is continuous and wider in case of animal evenly distributed pigments are there in case of human being the mostly pigment are uh, concentrated in the medulla in animal hair so for a species identification the precipitin test will be positive for an specific for human hair or the species or precipitin test will be specific for human uh, the animal species so what is medullary index is the diameter of medulla divided by diameter of shaft of hair that is lesser in case of human hair less than 0.33 or it is more than 0.5 in case of animal hair so this is animal hair the medulla is wider as compared to the cortex so the medullary index is the diameter of medulla divided by diameter of shaft will be more than 0.5 or more and the medulla in case of human hair is narrowed and cortex is thicker so the medullary index is 0.33 or less so this is a little bit about age estimation and please do subscribe the channel for uh, watching next videos and coming videos the uh, videos are going to be very interesting and this is about theoretical part now we will go on uh, practical uh, videos like for x-ray age estimation and doing different postmortem techniques and all so we will soon going to include all these techniques so thank you guys thank you so much and wish you all the best thank you